What's good, YouTube? It's your boy AK, man. No introductions, man. Today I want to get straight into it. It's not the happiest video I ever made. All right, we're just recording here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set the mood right. Because, like I said, this is gonna be this is gonna be a heavy hitter today. We're gonna be, oh hey, I got a lot to talk about. First of all. We've lost a lot of rappers over the years. Never like the past two years of my whole entire life. I've never seen anything like it. Okay. Right. Yes, this is Crush Cream Soda. I am not a sponsor. And. There was a guy, I think his name was William Wrong or something. He said that my videos are, he wanted to know what's up with China. And apparently my video is too long. Well, here's the thing, William Wrong, okay? Before you click the video, you can clearly see, clearly see it says an hour and some change. You click the hour video and some change, expecting it in five minutes, somebody should have slapped you when you was a baby. Okay, that's the problem. A lot of y'all don't get hit enough why y'all young, okay? So that's why y'all grow up to be dickheads. If a lot of y'all got slapped, I call it abuse, call it whatever you want. I got beat in the shape when I was young. That's why I'm here as a man, owning up the mistakes I made, which I'm gonna get into. Just hold on, bear. I told you, I got a heavy hitter today. I'm not coming to play with you. I just have to slow it down. Otherwise, I will just be Going hard like the last video. The last video I was just going hard, ranting. All right. Like, yeah. See it? All right. This is not lean again. We don't condone drug use over here. Quick disclaimer. If I say anything, it is purely entertainment and it should be treated as such. If I say I did something, it is completely fictional and should be treated as such. If I tell you this is not lean, it means this is not lean. So don't go in there trying to act, huh? You are not slick. You are a waste of oxygen. A lot of y'all are a waste of oxygen. But just because a lot of y'all are a waste of oxygen doesn't give me the right to tell you that your people should rest in peace. As a man, when I make mistakes, I'm a man I own up to it. And I tell you, hey, I made a mistake. I apologize. So I want to apologize, first of all, to my dear viewers. I am sorry. I am sorry I said may they rest in piss. Even though I think they are a waste of oxygen and they are a waste of life, I'm not taking that part back. But I don't think I should have told their people to rest in piss. If I told somebody that I would kill them, I only said that in self-defense after receiving death threats. But I realized the more you go up, you can't be saying that stuff stuff back. If you're a nobody and you tell another nobody, hey, fuck you, man, I'm going to kill you when I see you, then it is what it is. If you're nobody telling a nobody, nobody cares. But when you go up, you can't be saying that stuff because then people can use it against you. So I'm not apologizing because people could use it against me. As you can see, the video is still up where I said they can rest in piss. But I'm apologizing because of... It leads, it also is connected to what I'm gonna talk about today, which is a heavy hitter subject. Today, there's no breaks. First of all, listen. I may say things that offend certain type of people. That don't mean me and them people can't be cool. It just means you gotta learn to accept, you gotta learn to accept the differences in other people's opinions. We can all have differences in opinions and still be cool. If you can't accept that, something wrong with you. And it's not my fault. I don't give a fuck. I'm not here to, to appease your feelings and tiptoe around. Ah, I slapped the f I'm not tiptoeing around nobody. My white people and my non-black people, I need you to sit this one out. You can still listen because it's valuable stuff, but you can sit this one out. I'm here to talk to my black people today. Dear black people, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we're in trouble, black people. Dear black people. We're in trouble. We gotta fix up, all right? What do we gotta fix up? Wait a minute, I'll tell you. I'm 
I'll tell you right now. I'm going to tell you what we got to fix up after I drink this mix up. Ale, ale, ale. Mix up. Okay. Ole. Yeah, Ole. 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 Tristan Thompson. I don't know who that is, but listen. Black people, we're in trouble. Now, this issue that we got, it could all come down really to one thing, which is self hate. Am I still recording? Yeah. Self hate. Black people, we hate each other. This goes back to colonialism, really, if you, if you really get down to it. Black people, we used to rule this earth. I get, I, get, I get fired up when I talk about this because my ancestors directly are the ancient Egyptians. I'm from Sudan. Like my people built pyramids. My people invented medicine. My people invented architecture. My people studied the stars and understood astronomy and astrology. My, my people had electricity 4,000 years ago. Don't believe me? Look up the Baghdad battery. It was a primitive form of electricity. It was electricity nonetheless. I believe that the pyramid was an early form of Nikola Tesla's wireless electricity concept. Which, of course, I'm not going to say white man or black man, but colonialism or whatever, the invaders came and took and ruined and rewrote history. And, you know, they used religion and whatnot. To try to dumb you down and keep you stupid when you don't realize you used to rule this earth. On top of that, another way they effectively have done that, and this seemed to be working beautifully. Self-hate was installed in you. You hate yourself. Black people, let me tell you something. We don't like each other, and nobody likes us. I want you to stop and look at other races. Nigga, keep it 100. Keep it 100. Answer me honestly when I say this. Post Malone. Is he like greater from the artist? Fuck Post Malone. Let's come into our culture, hip hop. What's the nigga name? With the curly hair, I forget. Jack Harlow. You want to tell me you really sit down and listen to Jack Harlow like... This is fire, man. This is fire, man. Who? Nobody. But they support him. His people support him. When it comes to black people, we don't support each other. I take this part from Hassan Campbell. I give credit. I always do. Hassan Campbell really put this in perspective. My nigga, the missing black kid down the street from you. You wouldn't post them. Your black neighbor over there doing their little black business or whatever the fuck they doing. Shirts, whatever the fuck. You wouldn't even look their way. You wouldn't support them. But let a colonialist fucking Brian come through, Balenciaga, Gucci. Listen, I'm guilty of the same shit that I'm telling you. You know, that's how I realize it. We don't like each other. We don't support each other. Black people get rich, move away from black people. They don't want to see no more black people. We don't like each other. Keep it on it. Now, it's all, it's all good, really. It don't matter. None of it is, is, is. It's not a really dangerous mentality until it becomes dangerous and violent. You see what I'm saying? Then we got a problem. All right? You can see... The sickness that is self-hate taking extreme heights demonstrated beautifully by drill music. Black people, how much do you hate yourself and your people? You know what? To the point you want to go and kill. And again, I take a lot from Hassan Campbell because 
keep it 100. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have made this video. But I also feel responsible because I helped shape drill music into what it is today. How? Who do you think you are? Ah, shut up. I'm getting to it. Yes, me. I helped shape drill music into what it is today. I'm going to explain to you. That's why I feel responsible. That's why I feel I have to come and say this. So when I see people like Gucci Mane come up and say stop this in the dead, that makes me feel embarrassed and ashamed. I'm like, hey, <clears throat> I benefited a lot from drill music. Monetarily, financially, I benefited. I made a lot of money off of drill music. I was, I was running around. Let me tell you something. I'm going to explain this before I go any further. Because a lot of y'all don't believe me. A lot of y'all think I'm full of shit. But I'm going to tell you this, bitch. During the come up of the earliest form of drill music known to man. I'm talking Chief Keef. I'm talking Fredo Santana. R.I.P. God bless. God rest his soul. God bless his soul. Blood money. God bless his soul. Rest his soul. These people, I knew them. Me and a friend of mine, his name is Kevin. I'm not going to say last names. Shout out to Kevin. Kevin was a German dude. Was. He is a German dude. He helped me a lot in my lifetime. I used to live in Arabia. There was no means for me to make money besides doing something illegal. I couldn't get a job, bro. Legally, I couldn't. I was too young. And it was just... It was a... Too young, no opportunities, a mixture of both, but the need was still there for money due to the system. I'm not going to get into it. I'll save it for a different video, story times or whatnot. Point is, I needed money. I could have went out there and sold drugs. Could have. I could have done worse. And I've been around people doing worse. Successfully. But I didn't. I chose the online route. There was a lot of times all I had in front of me was this computer. And I had to use this computer to come up. That was my only option. How? Figure it out how. During a time when nobody gave a fuck about me. Shout out to Kevin. Kevin cared. Kevin reached out. Kevin showed love. How I met Kevin is we were both soldier boy fans. During these days, I was 16, 17. 15 to 17. During these days, Soldier Boy was our favorite rapper. I keep it 100. SODMG, I would have killed to be a SODMG artist and have an SOD chain. Huh? These were different times. To this day, I carry that inspiration. What I say when I went on This Is 50, I told them, Soldier Boy. See, I always give credit where it's due. I always do. I'm gonna get into it. Wait a minute, cause this this goes deep. You don't you don't know that I shaped the drill music into what it is today. Wait, I'm gonna tell you how. I'm gonna tell you how. Yes, I shaped it. So Kevin, Kevin was like me, but he was a little smarter than me and a little savvier than me. I had a little bit more in touch with Soldier Boy. And he really knew Soldier Boy before me. You know? He was like, uh, it was, was SODMD.com or whatnot. And he would reach out to Soldier on Twitter. You know? He, he had love from Soldier Boy. And a blessing from Soldier Boy. An official stamp, which, you know, he, we ran. Or I said he ran. I didn't really run none. I had one, but it was one or two. Three. He had way more. We were on SODMG or Soldier Boy fan pages on Facebook. <clears throat> this is before Instagram existed. It was Facebook fan pages. That was the thing. And his was way more successful. I'm talking hundreds of thousands. Of Some of them exist to this day. That's why I'm not saying last names. I don't know how he feels about me talking about it. Point is, he had them. Successful. <clears throat> and YouTube monetization was in its infant stages. Back then, to be monetized on YouTube, you didn't have to do a lot. Not a lot of all. All you needed was a YouTube and the ability to pull views. 
It wasn't like today you got to get a thousand subs and da da da. It wasn't like that. Anyone could have had a channel. Anyone could have been making money. You just didn't get paid until you reached a certain threshold. So that's what motivated me. A lot of people didn't even know about it at the time. Like I said, me and Kevin were savvy enough to know of it. And we did what we did. We used it to our advantage. I wasn't a rapper then. I was a YouTuber doing my little... I had, I had a little channel I was doing, action movies. So I knew about YouTube and how to run it up on YouTube. But I didn't have a name. I wasn't successful enough. But we utilized the fact that we found. And Kevin really put me on. I give him credit to this day. Every day I talk to him, I tell him, hey, man, I wouldn't be shit without him. Kevin showed me that we can upload Soldier Boy music and make money from it. Soldier Boy wasn't like most rappers, because this was a transitional time, and, 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 and social media was new. Facebook was new. MySpace was new in a grand scheme of things. Nowadays, all y'all got an Instagram, and y'all think y'all invented fire. At the time, having a Facebook page or whatever, not everybody was on that. And the people, the rappers that were successful enough to have a, a quote-unquote following, a monetizable one, if I would have posted their shit, they would have hit me with a copyright strike. So the boy, it was, this was way after he didn't have an Interscope Records deal no more, so his music was copyright free. On top of that, he was just in a house recording, this was like that little beat era. He'd make a song in the house, young guma rich nigga, young guma rich nigga. Put it up on YouTube, we re-upload it. If I re-upload it, he might share my link and help me make money. He wouldn't copyright strike me. That's why to this day I credit Soldier Boy. My first thousand dollars I ever seen in life it was thanks to Kevin and Soldier Boy. They came along Chief Keef a couple years later. See, a lot of people don't like to admit that Soldier Boy put on Chief Keef, but I'll be here to tell you because I was there during these times and I was one of the people to help put on Chief Keef. Kevin did it more than me because I kind of didn't believe in that. I found Chief Keef to be a little too heavy. This was the swag era. You got to think. At the time, it was snapbacks and tattoos and life was good. Life was simple. Nowadays, everybody want to be a killer. You guys ain't killed shit. Somebody should... Oh, let me calm down. Let me take a sip. See, I get, I get too fired up. Everything I'm saying here right now is a true story. Chief Keith, we all thought he was an SOD artist. He was an SOD artist at some point. See, Soldier Boy was a multi-millionaire, but he wasn't your average multi-millionaire. He was a young millionaire who really played video games and stayed on social media. He put on a lot of people for free, no contract. That includes a lot of your favorite rappers, Riff Raff. He was put on the same way. Um, I'm gonna, I don't know. Migos, if it wasn't for Soldier Boy, there would be no Migos. Keep it a hundred. But a lot of y'all don't like to admit it. That's why he gets mad and goes and says, I'm the first, I'm the first. He is every bit right when he says that. And a lot of y'all bitches for not giving a man his credit. That's why I didn't think he should have helped a lot of y'all. That's why I didn't. I stayed kind of away from Chief Key, from Migos, and a lot of them because I could see through it. I was 16 years old, but I can see a snake when I see the snake. Because what? I was right. They came up. They didn't give him no credit. You guys remember Ocean Gang? Why would a multi-millionaire put you on no contract, no nothing, no benefit, not even a finder's fee? He just puts you on out of love, and a lot of y'all don't give the man his credit. That's why a lot of y'all bitches, that's why a lot, to this day, I'm very careful who I put on and who I let around me. Because a lot of people are users. Even in my small music career, I've seen it happen. People come around you, hey, gay man, I love you, man. You my best friend, man. I care for you, man. But actions speak louder than words. These same people get on, use my little, huh? And then go fuck with my... And, 
I learned that lesson. I seen it with Soldier. I seen it in my own life. I learned it. Point is, Soldier Boy put on a lot of people, bro. Including Chief Keith. Chief Keith kind of invented drill rap as we know it today. Chief Keith was just an artist. He was trying to be like Soldier Boy. He was trying to live a good life. He was trying to just smoke his weed, wear his swag, <laughs> and just live a good life, bro. He don't want to be what you guys are trying to be today. He was in that life for real. That's why he was trying to get out of it. And he did get out of it successfully. He's a millionaire. Lives in L.A. Why does he live in L.A.? Because he sees Soldier Boy live in L.A. Soldier Boy flew him out. I remember him. Don't believe me? Look up the song Ugly by Chief Keef or Soldier Boy. You would see Chief Keef prior to fame stand at Soldier Boy's house. Just out of love. They're both wearing the same clothes. Just friends hanging out. Don't contract, no nothing. Should have put him on a contract. Because then he would have... Anyway. So it took a year for everything to pop up. This was around the time Chief Keith Don't Like came out. Me and Kevin, being SOD peoples, we st I still stuck with SOD. He did too. But we also expanded our money making activities into Chief Keith. Chief Keith wasn't signed. This was talking about a year prior to Love, Sosa, and all the um, Finally Rich and all that. A lot of his music was copyright free. Even after he signed, a lot of his music was copyright free. We were talking like the mixtape, <laughs> datpiff.com days. A lot of shit was just copyright free. We took that to our advantage. Chief Keith also showed love to us. And <clears throat> when he got signed, we also, you know, the Glow Gang, remember DBE? We expanded into them too. We had Facebook pages, we had YouTube channels. I still got like six of them. But I'm not gonna get into it. I eventually dropped that whole activity. But I'm, gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna get into it, everything being explained today. Now, when it comes to making money, we had to get creative. You know, like I said, Chief Keep got signed, Soldier Boy got re signed to some different label. A lot of music we couldn't have re uploaded and do what we do. And the views kind of went down on his side. I'll be honest. Still love him. Still SOD to that. You know? But the fact is facts. And we were making... We were the money makers. You know? We didn't work for no company. We had to just figure out what's making money and do it. We were teenagers. Very smart, creative teenagers. Unlike your average day teenager nowadays. Who can't even rub two cents together. And just send death threats and come at me hating and then think that they tough enough to go after these death threats because they think I'm pussy until they really step up to me and I put them in the dirt and then I tell them to rest in piss and come to apologize. But I still apologize because I'm a man of my actions. Man of my, um, you know, I'm a man enough to apologize and admit when I'm wrong. I'm sorry I told you to rest in piss. It was wrong of me. I'm not apologizing because of you. I'm apologizing because I know what's right and wrong. And I'm still, I've been leading you up, but I'm, I just want to tell you the truth about drill. So a lot of us, like me and Kevin, that include, and people came around us like college kid and DJ academics. We were no names, me and Kevin. We just did it. We were friends behind the scenes. We knew what we were doing. We knew whose page was whose. But we just kept it quiet. We weren't like college kid and, and these academics who, who really put his face and continued to grind. See, he was an adult at, during these days. We were teenagers. That being said, we kept doing it and it, our uploads continued beyond music. We did a lot of things such as this person said that on this person. Slide, da da da. Being 16, 17 years old, that's exciting to you. Wow. These savages, they live in... It's like animals in the zoo. It's like a cockfight. Literally. You know, you put money on this camel, that camel. 
a horse race or whatever. This horse, that horse. So this was entertaining, but none of us really seen, you know, now that we're grown ups, none of us seen what it could become one day, where nowadays people are going out and killing just to get on and say, I'm smoking on who or who. Bro, during these days, Fredo was a good dude. He might have looked scary with the tattoo and stuff. Yeah, I honor him. He might have looked scary. Same thing with Blood Money. Same thing with Chief Keef. But these people weren't trying to prove to you they were drillers. They knew what the life they were living. They were trying to get out of it. And they did get out of it. But the modern day drill artists, see, <clears throat> with the wave that we help flood YouTube with and flood our social media, we kind of really influenced the generation here. Right? Because trust me, you, you might look at me and see what I'm doing. You don't realize that half of the shit you watched on Chief Keefe back in the day, besides academics and college kid, was me and Kevin. <laughs> Nigga, we ran a campaign. And we made our money. We got paid very nicely. But we influenced a lot of people wrong. We didn't realize it because we ourselves were teenagers desperate to make money in desperate situations. And we escaped poverty, but we benefited from a lot of fuckery. Because when Chief Keef and, and Boss Stop made a song and said, do a drill a puzzle and la run, bang, bang. It sounded nice, but we didn't know what he was talking about. We forgot that these are real places. Do a drill on St. Lawrence and he's smoking who and who and Tuka. Until I was 18 years old, I thought Tuca was just a strain of weed. I didn't know that Tuca was a person who... I didn't know that. And watching the Tuca mom interview, fuck my head up. Because when I look at his mom, I see my mom. I see a black woman trying to raise a couple black kids in a very rough and tough world. And our world, you guys know already, I guess, how it feels about black people, especially black men. Especially black teenage kids. Alright? If you were never a teenage black guy, let me tell you, it's not easy. I'll be the first to tell you. It's horrible. The world hates you. Your people hate you. Everybody just hates you, bro. Statistically, life is not on your side. Statistically, what they say, one in five people or one in three people might end up in a grave or a jail. So it's not easy. We did what we had to do to get out the situation. In the process, we did what we had to do at the time to get out, but we didn't realize the influence this could have. Looking now, like 10 years later, to see what life has become, to see that this, this sickness that is one of the, you know, black on black crime. And you know, you go, you go out there, you kill another black man, and then you brag about it. You just made another black woman like your mom's side, bro. But a lot of y'all hate your own mom. A lot of y'all are fucked up, living a fucked up life. You know, I don't know who, uncle raped you, something. Somewhere along the line, something. You know, you live with a stepfather, a single mom. She might be taking out her frustrations on you, nigga. You know, all that is culminating into this young person. She's not realizing what she's doing to you. Just like I wasn't realizing what I was doing when I was pumping out this drill campaign. But all that is, she's taking it out on you, putting all this hate into you. Now you hate the black woman. Now you go out there, you want to kill the next black man you see. Right or wrong? Tell me I'm lying. Am I lying? We hate each other. We don't support each other. We don't give a fuck about each other. Nigga, in businesses that I have took part in in my life, I've noticed that people would rather go to the white man even though if he was doing a lesser job just because he's white. Just because we have that idea that black man means worse. Right or wrong? You might support the Italian designer but you wouldn't support Vir Virgil Abloh until he's dead. Right or wrong? Not to say that the white man wasn't any good. The white man was amazing. He was a genius. He was actually a very honorable man. <laughs> but I'm just trying to point out what's wrong with our mentality. Because this goes beyond 
business choice or, or, or who you choose to shop with, this goes, this goes way beyond that. And it's sad. It's very sad. And us as a people, we got to make a change. We got to abolish drill music. Because to the drill generation that came right after, I wasn't part of that. I didn't know these people. Fredo showed me love. Blood Money showed me love. Chief Keith showed me love. Kevin, I owe him to this day. He showed me a lot of love. We made a lot of money together. But the next part due to life and what happened after, I wasn't a part of that money movement. And eventually I let it go. But I got to sit there and as a viewer and a listener and to see what shit has become and accumulated to after the years. Let me tell you, it's not pretty. It really hit me when I found there's the song in the UK. First of all, UK drill. What is that, bro? Look at how far the influence has grown. Toronto. Canada is supposed to be a safe place. But now you got some bum-ass niggas in Toronto who trying to act rough and tough. All right, let me take it. And this poison that is drill music. Fueling the wars. Fueling you going to kill a black man. Music is powerful and words are powerful. And words are, are, words are as powerful as spells. Words are spells. You, if you listen to... Oh, I'm going to go kill this nigga. Woo, woo, woo. That's, that's going to be your thoughts. Have you guys ever watched gore videos? I'll give you this example. Put, put an idea in perspective. Gore videos. I had to stop watching gore videos. I used to love them. I used to be like, this is real life. I got to see this. I was wrong. I was just talking to my little bro yesterday. Somehow in a conversation, we're talking about Russia, I think. And it came up that they did Three Guys One Hammer. But he, he didn't know what Three Guys One Hammer is. I told him, bro, don't look it up. Seriously, don't look it up. Don't bother. I'll, I'll explain to you what three guys... If you don't know what three guys want hammer is, I'll give you a quick explanation of what it is. Boom. It was three Russian guys. They found a homeless dude sleeping. All right? They brought a hammer, and they took turns on him. What did they do with the hammer? Just think of his head as a watermelon. And you see how people hit the watermelon, hit it, hit it, hit it, and boom... That's what they did to the poor homeless man. They filmed it on a video. It was like one of those live leak videos. Back in the day, internet censorship wasn't as prevalent as it is today, so <clears throat> a lot of these shock videos circulated. This was not like two girls, one cup type video. That was a sexual thing that came out to be fake. However, this was a real murder on camera type video. Classified as gore. I noticed this in my own life where like my life might I'm doing okay. Like let's say I'm doing okay. Life is not perfect, but life is not bad right now. I'm doing okay. I got a little money in my pocket. I got the meal. Mental health is somewhat stable. I don't have anything traumatic going on at the moment. But I might go and watch a cartel video. Ah, uh, dude getting sliced up on camera. The next day, I wake up, I'm angry for no reason. It's not for no reason. It's because you've seen the cartel video. You've seen the dude get chopped up on camera. Now you're just walking around in negativity. You're vibrating negative. And you don't even know why. But I know why. It's because you watched the nigga get killed on camera. That's why. So you got to control what you take in. Your body is your temple. If you take in negativity all the time, you're just going to be walking around mad all day. And I've seen it happen in my own life. You see how angry I was the last video? When I learned that in China, they're using people's health barcodes to control population from going this, this place, that place. When I seen everything I could, that they call the conspiracy theory come to life, I was angry. How can you not be angry? But it proves the point, right? 
Your body is a temple. If you take in negative shit all the time, of course you're going to be walking around negative. Of course you're going to be walking around mad. So you got to control what you take, bro. Because look at the UK. The UK always had street crime and knife crime. But it wasn't as bad as it is now. I heard a song, and I'm not going to play any song for copyright reasons, but I'm going to describe it to you. You can do your own research. It was by uh, <clears throat> a British group. I forget the name, but um, the artist was, I think is Moscow 17. The song goes like this. I mean, I don't remember the name, so this is just listen. Name one. Let's just say, person A. Person A is dead. Person B is dead. Person C is dead. Person four is dead. And then the ad libs. He's dead. He's dead. in British accent. <laughs> person four is dead. Person five is dead. Person six is weird. I don't know how he alive. I'm like, holy. So. This sickness that started off in Chicago, and this sickness, and I call it sickness, it is fucking sickness. It is poison for the black community, okay? I don't see white people going around and killing each other and bragging about it with names like that. This is ridiculous. Sickness. Complete sickness. The sickness has spread beyond Chicago, beyond America, all the way... The fucking UK? Bro. Man's a couple of banner. Man's a couple of banner. Bro, I know the UK from Mr. Bean. Now you got Mr. Bean people walking around trying to be drillers? No, bro. Ole. Ole. He's like, person A is dead. Person B is dead. Ole. Ole. I just put my pop filter back on. Okay. Let me see some here. Okay. Jay Z got his lawyers together, got his shit together, and went to court trying to fight the law that that um were, were Music lyrics can be used against you, of course. First of all, even though I think that drill music is poison, even though I think that drill music, I think we shouldn't be dissing the dead. You killed somebody, let his family grieve. Let his family grieve. You hear me, Julio Fulio, you ugly motherfucker? You look like a cockroach. When I look at you, I see a cockroach. Okay, you're rapping about, you know what I mean, your life, whatever, I get that. Once the person's dead, the person's dead. I get it, they this, you're dead, I get it. I get it. I told people to rest in piss, I get it. Trust me, I get it. If anybody in this world gets it, it's me, I get it. I got a lot of story times, where you get to hear my stories coming, you will understand why I understand. But sometimes you gotta take the high road, man. You gotta take, you gotta be the bigger person. Even though they diss your dad. And it sounds rough and tough. To be, why I gotta be the bigger person? They diss my dad first, I know. But you gotta take the bigger. So even though I agree with that your music should just be treated as art and should not be used in court against you, 100%. I agree with Jay-Z. But I'm not excusing you dumbass nigga. I'm not excusing the people who become millionaires go back to the hood to shoot a drill video and go back to the master. Like, think about this. He's a millionaire, bro. Lives in mansions, penthouses. Then they go to the hood to shoot a video. Does that make any fucking sense to you? Doesn't make any sense at all. Censorship is wrong. Freedom of speech is very fucking important. I left my own life behind to come here for these freedoms of speech. So you best believe I'm a fight for them to the enemy. 
But just because you're free to say something don't mean you should say it, you dumbass nigga. Like a young thug. Got Jewish lawyers and shit trying to... Now they're using, what, slime? Like, did you did you see his court paperwork? These academics did it best. He was read, They were reading off lyrics in court. A hundred shots at the Draco. A lot of y'all gonna call me a hypocrite today, and I'm expecting it. I'm expecting some hypocrite comments. But it's okay. Because I am a man. I will do what a lot of y'all won't do, which is apologize. Which is say, you know what? I'm man enough to know I did wrong at some point in life. But I'm here to fix and move on from that point. I'm here to do better. I'm not here to stay in the same mindset and keep spreading poison and keep killing other black people because I don't want to be a hypocrite. Fuck you and fuck how you feel. Change starts with you. You want a better world? Well, guess what? You better be a better man, bro. You want to live in a safer environment? Guess what? You better start becoming a safer person to be around. That's just a fact. If all of us think like that, the world would be better. But a lot of us won't. See, that's why you, you people keep saying, Oh, why won't they just stop killing each other? You got to understand, this, this, these are murder beefs that go back years. It started off with somebody, I guess, in the 90s or 80s. It really started off with some predatory people. They keep saying free Larry Hoover. I say fuck Larry Hoover. Fuck Larry Hoover. Fuck King David. And I say this, I know BDs and ZDs. I know BDs and ZDs. Both of them respect me. And they know that I don't gangbang. But they respect me because I speak my truth. My dear friends, BDs and ZDs, with all the love that I got for you, and this is why I say this, fuck Larry Hoover, fuck BDs, I'm sorry, no, nah, fuck King David, fuck Larry Hoover, they were both poison, BDs and ZDs are poison to the black community, look, what, what have BDs and ZDs done for us, have they put money in your pocket, have they helped you build what, did they build skyscrapers in the hood, no, you were a segregated community. You're even more segregated now. Now they got more reasons to put a fence around you. Like, have you seen the hood in Chicago, bro? They got fences, fences around the fucking neighborhood. Segregation. Is it wrong to put fences? I'm glad they put the fences up. To contain the sickness within I'm here to give you tough love. If everybody keeps saying, oh, it's not a problem, it's okay, it wasn't your fault, you're just killing because he's a... Nah, bro. Somebody gotta come and say it, bro. These people diss my dad, but yet I'm here to apologize. Because I wanna move forward. I got kids that look up to me, bro. You know why I do scam rap and not drill rap? It's because I talk about technology, I talk about computers, I talk about game money. I don't talk about, that's, that's the focus in life for me. Not just waking up and trying to kill the next man. A lot of y'all are broke. All you got to your name is a gun. A lot of y'all OGs, they're also broke. All they got to their name is their war stories. And like Hassan, you get to see it on his channel, he'll tell you about it. All they get to talk about is jail stories. Yeah, I'm a real nigga. I did 20 years in jail. That's not that's nothing to be proud of, bro. I've been locked up before. It's not pretty. I wouldn't that's why I don't wish jail on my worst enemy. It's nothing pretty about being in jail. It's nothing uh, uh, It's nothing to glorify. Nothing to glorify. There's nothing pretty about being in jail and living that life. If you've been in jail for real for 20 fucking years and you come out and you glorifying it, maybe you should go back, bro. Since you like it so much. Because when I was locked up, I didn't like it. I use drugs to this day from the trauma I've been through. Just to forget about it. Just to be able to sleep at night some nights. Because it's not pretty. You motherfuckers, on the other hand, 
You want to glorify it and make it cool, but you you know there's kids that look up to you. Yeah, you glorify the shit. There's nothing pretty about it. Chief Keep got rich. He moved to California. Soldier Boy got rich. He moved to California. You niggas want to stay in the hood because you suffer rough and tough? For what? You can stay rough and tough. You're either going to go to jail or somebody going to come and kill you. You got to break these cycles, man. You got to break these cycles, man. These record labels and all these people, they benefit from you beefing. See, I don't give a fuck about a label. I don't need a label. I am the label. I don't care if my music never blow up. I'm good. I have money before rap. I'm chilling. But I'm here to say what needs to be said, bro. You want to live in a better tomorrow? It starts with you. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. Nothing in this life that's worth is going to be easy. Everything that has, for every reward at the end, you got to take risk. No risk, no reward. I risk, I risk my own quote-unquote street reputation and tough guy reputation, but yet I come here and apologize to you. They didn't apologize to me. As a matter of fact, fuck them. But I still, I'm the man, I'm the bigger man. Because I'm, I'm chasing something. That's, I'm trying to better my life. I'm trying to change my life around. Not because I'm pussy. We got to abolish drill music. Abolish drill music just like we abolish boom bap. Straight up. Because are you telling me you guys enjoying what? I get, I get it. See, I tell you why it became famous. See, there's a, there's a need... For shock value. You remember two, three years ago <clears throat> during the SoundCloud rapper era when 6ix9ine and up came up? Rap had reached the point of saturation. Then people needed something more. They're like, man, this is it's over. It got boring. You eat the same food every day, it's boring. Then you, people come out with color hair, you're like, wow, this is exciting, this is new. So that becomes a thing. But after a while, even that becomes boring. And now you don't see it all up to a, from red hair, from sorry, from blonde hair to red hair to green hair to, uh, it was, that, that got boring. Somebody came out with rainbow hair. You're like, wow, now that got boring. Now what, what is, what, what's missing? People need that shock value. So people come up, you know, with murder stories. That's what made me like Gucci Mane back in the day. I respected him. You know, the nigga did, he did what he had to do. It was self-defense. These stuff sound nice in stories and rap and media, but you guys forget that these are real life people, man. Pookie that they were smoking on, he's not coming back home. <sighs> to, to a degree, it's Pookie's fault that he got killed. Why would you run up in another mad crib for a chain? What happened had to happen. But I'm saying these are not pretty. Look at Soldier Boy. I remember Soldier Boy. <clears throat> I was young. I see myself in Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy is not very different from a lot of us here gamers. He's a gamer. He plays video games, man. His come up was dancing, you. But then he had to catch a body to defend himself. It changed him. After that day, he started associating with people like Chief Keef. It changed him. He's fighting his own demons. I wish Soldier Boy was my friend in real life because I would have been there for him. Soldier Boy needed a friend like me. All right? He needed real love in his life. Real brotherly love, real family love. I didn't have that at some point. It would led me to find them all demons. And you know, butterfly effect, I told him to rest in piss. I apologize, but I'm, 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 I'm aware, I'm self-aware. I see why I make these mistakes. 
You gotta always be self-reflective, self-analytical, self-critical. Don't wait for somebody else to come critique you. I critique myself every day. It's a lot of things I've done that I regret. It's a lot of people that I hurt and offended that I come back and apologize to. Even if they make me look stupid, I get it out my way because life is short. The people we lost during these drill wars or drill battles or whatever you want to call it, drills, gang wars, whatever, I want you guys to think of them as heroes, except for people like King Von because they pushed up. You know, you live and die by the sword, bro. But the people that got caught up in the bullshit, such as Tuka, those are heroes. This is a message to Tuka's mom. First of all, when I look at you, I see my own mom. So I want you to know you are my mom too. I'm your son as well. Charleston White, he's older. He could have been like, you know, you guys are like closer in age, but me, if Tuka was still here, he'd be my age. So I am your son. And I'm going to let you know your interview affected me. It affected a lot of people my age. It showed them a different perspective. It's easy to get caught up in the wah, rah, rah. See, the streets put you in a position where it's kill or be killed. And when you're in that loop, you know, that little game, that little fight, it's hard to think outside of that, who you're affecting. It makes me sad, it makes me emotional, man. But, I'm not here to cry. I got my own demons to deal with, just like y'all. Yeah. I'm just here to push a small and straight to the point message. Us, as a black people, we got to abolish it. I, I target my message to black people because black people, we run the world. We used to run the world for real. You know, the colonialists put us down, dumb us down. But guess what? We still run the world in other ways. We start the trends. We started hip hop. If it wasn't for black people, it wouldn't be no Post Malone or Jack Harlow. Keep it on it. These are black art forms. We set trends to this day. If I go on out there and put on a fucking weird ass shirt, I bet you someday some, some other black people and non black people gonna come out wearing it. We set trends, bro. We might talk a certain way and white people copy it and they copy it. So we got responsibility. With great power comes responsibility. We gotta, we gotta tap in with our ancestors and realize that we were kings, bro. Our whole philosophies that we, we have way before they came around and took it 4,000 years ago, my ancestors, the ancient Egyptians, the greats, not the modern day Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, the black ones, my ancestors. They lived in harmony with the world. It was peace and prosperity. It was supposed to be peace and prosperity all around. And like I said, harmony. Notice what I said. Harmony with the world. Harmony in the world don't mean going out there and killing. See, Hassan Campbell said something powerful. It's not in a black man's nature to get up and want to be a killer or quote unquote real nigga. It's not in a black man's nature to get up there and, oh, if a nigga pull up today. I'm going to line his ass up on GD, on BD, on BD, on BD. That's not in the black man's nature. We invented science. We're supposed to, we're, I expect more from us than this poison and bullshit that you guys are pushing and pandering. And I say what I say, I don't bite my tongue. I said what I said. If somebody don't like it, it's like I told you before. Find a wall near you. I want you to find the wall. I want you to grab the wall as such. I don't want to touch my walls, but feel you know. Bah! Hit your head against the wall as hard as you can. Please do me a favor. Because I don't give a fuck. I'm here to give tough love. And like I said, a lot of gang people follow me. 
They know I don't support it. They know how I feel about it. And I'd say this the same thing I said in front of you. I'd say it in front of my DD friends or BD friends. And they were respected either way because a lot of them agree with it. Right or wrong? Now, I'm not here to recommend snitching or whatever the fuck y'all got going on. I'm here to tell you I'm addressing the issue from the root cause of it. If we come together for a better tomorrow, it will be a better tomorrow. People on top don't want you to come together, though. They want you fighting each other. See, like I said, it sounds that the gas prices go up. But you guys are on the internet talking about men and women, men and women. Shut your bitch ass up. Men and women existed in harmony at some point in time. Why, 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 are we, why, why, why are we having gender wars? Why is this even a thing? This was never a thing. It's because of social media in this new age we're in. Well, it shouldn't be an issue. We should, we should, we should address it differently. It's not in our benefit to be so divided and polarized. And I know the problem is bigger than addressing it in this little sentence. I'm going to address it in more videos. But here, today, I'm here to let you know we should abolish drill music. As a person who was around during the first era of drill music, and I, and I, I promoted it and pandered it across all of YouTube and other platforms like it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. It was at the time to me. I didn't see the effect it could have on my generation, I think the effect they have could, uh, could have on the next generation. I didn't. I was in it to make my money, and I made my money. And I moved on, but now that I'm seeing it, I'm letting you know. This is horrible. This is horrendous. It went beyond Chicago. Now you got New York drill. And now you got, all the way, Toronto, UK. Anywhere it's black, inner city, black people, poverty, yada yada, projects, you find it. It's just not good, bro. A lot of y'all need to go to Africa. See, I be telling them Somali niggas in Toronto, I be like, you out there pushing and pattering this bullshit. Go back to Somalia real quick. Go see, how, go see what your family left behind. Why they came to Canada, for example. My Toronto niggas. Go see, go see why. And Africa shouldn't be like this. This should be, we are rich in resources. We are rich in information and knowledge and history that got destroyed. But I won't let it get destroyed. I do my research. The ancestors speak to me. When I come on here and talk, the ancestors speak to me. When I make mistakes, that's because my nigga, I'm not perfect. I'm not an angel. I don't live outside this universe that me and you both live in. So if something might affect you, it might affect me too. Just for the, just, just, just for the record, you guys might have seen me in <clears throat> music videos wearing designer and Gucci and purple jeans. I want to let you know right now, in my everyday regular life, I don't wear purple jeans. I don't wake up and put on purple jeans. I put on pajamas just like you do. Or nothing at all. And sometimes clothes from Walmart. I'm only dressing for you for the camera to get a couple. In my regular life, I don't wear that stuff. I live a regular, humble life. I dress from Walmart. And there's nothing wrong about it. But a lot of y'all got priorities fucked up. We should start by abolishing drill music. You gotta stop listening to it as a whole. The more we promote it, the more we share it around, the more it becomes a thing. The more it becomes rewarding for the artist. If it becomes rewarding for the artist, he might get up and go kill you, or your sister, or your brother, or your poor innocent mom, or your poor innocent father, if you got one. He might go and kill somebody around you, to go and make a song and say they're smoking them. You see what I'm saying? 
You promoting it leads to you getting hurt by the end of the day. So be careful what you promote. Be careful what you listen to and allow into your life. I only listen to music about making money or getting money. Even though I might have set some lyrics in my own music about smoking a nigga or shooting a nigga, but I don't live that life. That was a persona. I was mad. I was expressing it through that means of music. That clear for you? Go and listen to music about getting rich and you will get rich. Because that's what you will attract to yourself. Words are spells. The law of attraction is real. If you keep saying, I'm a killer, I'm a killer, I'm a killer, if you find yourself, <laughs> huh? Don't blame nobody but yourself. You attracted it to yourself. That's why I get up, I say, I'm rich. Even when I ain't got no money, I say, I'm rich. I will get rich. I'm all about being rich. I'm all about moving forward, getting better, da 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 da. Watch life bend according to your will. Okay? Let's leave the sickness behind. Drill music is sickness. And until we all come together and say, fuck this shit, let's leave it in the past, it won't be a part of your past. It'll be a part of your everyday present. And I don't want to be in a present where drill music is present. That is not a present. Make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? Before you come in, hey, let me tell you something, William, wrong. I forgot to say this. Your picture looked like that incel nigga that did that. I forget his name. But don't, don't he look like you got know what I'm talking about? <laughs> anyway, I let it be. My videos are one hour because a lot of y'all trying to go to sleep. You need something nice to listen to. I hope I can be in something nice you listen to, baby. Okay, you play me, okay? Follow me on Instagram, AK the Brie. Feel free to get in touch, any video suggestions. Uh, leave a comment, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button. It's your boy AK, I'm out of here. See you in the next one.